All right, Shalom. There's the brother in the hall, your friend in GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath who are believing this word, and all truth and sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God, Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashim is in the name, Rakah's spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwath is sisters. Shalawan means peace, and Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. This is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. All right, I want to go into a lesson based on the movie, which is uh, Leave the World Behind. All right, and for those who haven't seen it, you know, I'll try my best through the spirit not to spoil anything, um, anything major. But it was a very spiritual movie. All right, and it really goes back to the scriptures. It really goes back to the words of the Heavenly Father that are being lived in these times concerning prophecy. All right, because everything that happened in that movie scenario goes back to prophecy, really, when you deal with the overall scenario. All right. Now, not to spoil it, what I'll do is I'll just read the general summary of the movie. All right. And then I'll go into some scriptures to highlight the time that we're in, which is the time of prophecy. All right. Now, leave the world behind. It says a family Vacation on Long Island is interrupted by two strangers bearing news of a blackout. As the threat grows, both families must decide how best to survive the potential crisis, all while grappling with their own place in this collapsing world. All right. And we know through the spirit all right, that the Lord's intention is to change the present course of this world. All right. Through judgment. All right. There's a controversy that the Lord has with the world and he's going to judge this world. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go here. Before I go to that, I want to grab this. It says Second Edges chapter 15, and I'll start at the top first. Second Edges 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So we know that the vision, the prophecies of Yahweh Shemel Shah will come to pass in this time. And we're not to be phased by people's non-belief, people's disbelief. When people hear these words and they scoff at it. And what you notice in that movie is that the people in that movie, well, most of them, were not prepared for the society to collapse. And one of the main things, I don't know if you would consider this a spoiler or not, is that the blackout caused the internet and basically uh, communication to cease. And people don't really know how dependent they are on these devices until they're taken away. All right, now we understand the Lord told us these things would happen. That eventually there's going to come a time where this society is going to collapse. And it's all according to the, the will of the Heavenly Father. All right, now let's read verse 5. Second Edges 15 and 5. Behold, saith the Lord... I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You know, and I think about this too, right? The scriptures tell us, and I want to just get it. Isaiah 33, and I'll start at verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. See, what we know, there's a quote in the movie, and I'll just say it real quick. It says uh, something to the effect that in times of calamity, the best gift that you can have is a, a warning, a heads up. And most people don't get a heads up. All right. And that's why you should count yourself among the privileged to have a warning from the Heavenly Father to receive the warning. Because the scriptures say the Lord hasn't spoken in a dark place. So ultimately, this warning has gone out all across the planet however only a few would receive that warning all right 
real quick is Isaiah chapter 45. And I'm going to jump to verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. All right, because again, this word is all over the Internet. It's on the uh, highways and hedges of every major, every major city in America. All right, this word is preached all across the planet Earth. So the Lord didn't speak in a dark place, but only the remnant would receive this warning from the Heavenly Father. All right, matter of fact, and the watchmen are set up to do so. But what you notice in that movie was that it caught the uh, main characters, if you will, by complete surprise. All right. I won't give anything away for brothers who've already saw it. You know, you know. All right. But for the most part, everybody in that movie was caught unawares. They, did, they didn't even expect it. Life was going on as usual and they expected it to go on the same way. And then things changed dramatically, quickly. You know, when you deal with a blackout in general, you lose the Internet in a lot of cases. You lose communication. So you have no idea what's going on in the next city. You have no idea why the blackout happened. You have no idea what's going on in the earth outside of your your area of location. See, when this thing takes off, the ones who know this truth. You are going to have a, a greater peace than anybody else. Because you know where it's coming from. You know who's doing it. All right. This is uh, Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So the Lord set up the watchman, beginning with our apostles, who continue to watch and convey the message through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemal Shai of what's to come. Going into news articles and pointing out how it goes to prophecy, because prophecy really is our timeline. It shows us how close we are to the will of the Lord concerning certain things in the earth. Namely, the end of Esau's world and the beginning of it that followeth, which is Yahweh Shai's rulership. These things are very important in a time where you have a lot of those of the circumcision who are just celebrating the fact that we're Israelites and we have our culture. They aren't necessarily preparing themselves for the will of the Heavenly Father concerning prophecy. And what you saw in the movie, Leave the World Behind, is that it caught them completely unaware. And they had no idea where to turn to. They didn't know what to do. See, knowledge and wisdom is, is going to be the stability of the elect because they understand, Lord willing, we be a part of that number, what's happening and who's doing it. They're not going to be ignorant to Satan's devices. But everybody else who count this word for not, who chalk it up as all conspiracy theories, when things happen in this earth, they're going to be completely unaware. And when you watch this movie, you start to see how bugged out these uh, individuals were because they thought life was just going to be normal. They had no idea, nor were they prepared for things to change in the earth. All right. And this is a great advantage through the spirit that the Lord has given the elect. Lord, will we be a part of that number? And they have the elect received this understanding through the spirit of the Lord, because everybody's hearing this word, but only the elect are going to hear it and receive it. All right. This is Proverbs chapter three. And I am going to jump to 21. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Matter of fact, this is beautiful. So what I want to do is go to Proverbs 3. And I want to get uh, verse 21 in the NLT. All right, it says, my child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them. All right. Now, let's do this. Let's look up the Hebrew word for discretion. Because it says, get wisdom, keep sound wisdom. All right. And also keep discretion. All right. And that word for discretion is. Mazama, Mazama, and it says purpose, discretion, device, plot, purpose, discretion, devices. All right. Now, keep in mind, we know that we're Israelites and our and our apostles. All right. Apostle Hall, for example, says that it's not just about knowing you're an Israelite and it's 
you start to understand how true that is as we get closer and closer to the end and you hear the conversations of people in the world compared to what you already know and understand. And it's not just your Israelite. You understand the times that we're living in, which is priceless. That's one thing that I noticed about that movie. And I saw the movie twice. Uh, me and the brothers were able to watch it last night. And then I was able to catch it on Friday. And what I noticed about that movie is how priceless wisdom and understanding was in, in that time, especially. How most people were asking questions that they really didn't have answers to. And it was it, it, it had them perplexed. You know, the scriptures go into that per, uh, with perplexity. Because Proverbs 3 is saying, keep wisdom and discretion, meaning still understanding the plot, what the agenda of the Heavenly Father is, all right, and how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in the midst of that. All right, this is Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to jump down to verse 15, all right, and it reads, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. With all our getting, we are to get understanding. And what I noticed in that movie was that having understanding was priceless because there was a certain level of peace that comes with understanding what you was happening in the earth. All right. And I won't give anything away, but there was an example of a man who knew what was going on. And there's a different countenance to understanding what's going on, especially in a time where nobody has answers, man. Let's go to this. Because this is beautiful. This is a uh, John chapter 16. And I'm going to jump down to verse 33, but I want to read it in the NLT. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth. You have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. All right. So Yahweh Shai has overcome the world, but it also mentions. All right. That he has given us peace. All right. I want to also get in the NLT while I'm on this point. John chapter 14. And I'm going to jump down to around verse 27. Yep. In the NLT, it says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give because nobody else has answers outside of this truth. All right. When this message is preached, all right, eventually it's going to be performed. It's being performed now, but concerning the great judgments of the heavenly father when those things begin to happen in the earth the elect are not going to lose confidence so to speak they're not going to be perplexed they're not going to be confounded because the lord had already given warning and again these things are extremely important especially in these times and that's why the scriptures talk about the gift of a of peace of mind all right since i mentioned that let's go back to proverbs the third chapter because there was a massive blackout, all right? And in the movie, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know how to uh, function. They didn't know what to do in that situation. They didn't know why it was happening. When these certain things happen in the earth, all right, martial law is not going to bug out the elect. Even blackouts are not going to bug out the elect. FEMA camps being set up are not going to bug out the elect. Because the Lord had already given warning. But for most people, this is going to completely blindside them, man. All right. Proverbs 3 and 21 again reads. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down. Thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. See, there's a reason the Lord keeps giving us these precepts. There's a reason that we keep rehearsing 
certain precepts through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shai. There's a reason certain precepts continue to come out video after video. Because when shit hits the fan, excuse my French, these things are going to come to your mind. Lord willing, we be a part of that number immediately. Once people begin to panic, you're going to have a second gear that nobody else has. And that's this knowledge, wisdom and understanding, which is the stability of our times. It says your sleep shall be sweet. Now, it's hard to imagine certain things because we haven't actually lived through it, but we've been warned already. So when they start to happen, we're not going to be afraid with sudden fear as the scriptures command us not to do. We're going to be of a good cheer, of a good heart as the Lord commanded us to, uh, to do or to be. You know, the Lord said, be of good cheer for he has overcome the world. So when these things start to happen, we're going to understand who's doing it. We're not going to be afraid with sudden fear like the rest of these people in the world, man. We're going to understand through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shada, it's the Lord that's doing all of these things. And Lord willing, we be a part of that number. We're going to have a certain level of confidence and salvation. All right, because that's important. With all you're getting, you're supposed to be getting understanding. And a part of that understanding is having confidence that the Lord can and will save. All right, matter of fact, let's go here. This is Jeremiah chapter 29. And I'm going to jump down to verse 11. All right. And it reads, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And the NLT it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And we're supposed to cleave to that, especially in the times that we're coming into. Because one thing I notice, and again, I'm trying to go into this movie without giving any spoilers away because the movie is fairly recent. But knowledge and wisdom being the stability of thy times is going to be priceless in that time, man. Even the doomsday preppers and all of these guys who, they, and there's an example of that in the movie. People who prepare for doomsday and apocalypse. And it doesn't compare to, to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because you don't really know where you're going to be at when, when shit hits the fan, excuse my French. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints because our faith through the spirit, our confidence in the Lord is going to give us the ability to understand that the Lord can save us from any scenario and we can't prepare just for one. So the best thing to do is to prepare your mind for what we're going to go through and have confidence in how by Shemel Shai. Because you have a lot of people who have bunkers, who have saved up bullets, and MREs, and they believe they're going to strengthen themselves against the day of the Lord. But guess what? You can't escape judgment. And two thirds of our people, instead of acknowledging their offense, they're trying to escape judgment by making a, a covenant with death and hell. Real quick, this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16. And I'll start at verse 14. A man indeed killeth through his malice and the spirit, and when it is gone forth, returneth not, neither the soul received up cometh again, but it is not possible to escape thine hand. So you have people who are strengthening themselves in guns and money, but you can't deliver yourself through those things because again, only righteousness is going to deliver in the time that we're coming into. And it, the down payment on salvation is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Shem Shah. Alright, there's Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. And the elect, Lord willing, we be a part of that number, all right? Their righteousness is not of themselves. You know, our faith is shown through our works, but we're not justified by our works. Real quick, this is Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Because, again, another um, description, if you will, of the elect is the vessels of mercy. Now, ultimately, the entire nation of Israel is, is a vessel of mercy, if you will. But that mercy is going to be seen on the elect. Because those are the ones that the Lord put the spirit on to return. Two thirds of our people refuse to receive correction. They refuse to receive the mercy of the Lord. So the mercy of the Lord is going to be upon them through death by pain. And then they'll come back in their right mind through the regeneration born through the loins of the elect. See, when you understand 
the plan and the will of the Heavenly Father, it puts you in a different mindset when you see certain things occur in the earth. All right. Being servants of the Lord, we understand the Lord's will and his agenda. So while we're in the world, we're not of the world. We still have to deal with our day to day. But our mind understands the will of the Lord and how things are going to play out in the near future. All right. Real quick. This is Psalms 123 and 2. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord, our power until that he have mercy upon us. So every time we look at certain things happening in the earth, we look at the words of the Heavenly Father and we're able to gauge where we are in the Lord's will. The Lord's will is priority in our life. Two thirds of our people, they're chasing their own dreams their own vain hopes we still have to be in this world and we still have to handle our responsibilities but that comes second to the will of the heavenly father and that's what the servants of the lord are they're the they're at the hand of the lord doing whatever the lord requires them to do according to his his uh his service not the service of the world those things come second and because of that when things hit the fan People are not going to know what to do, but the servants of the Lord are going to know what to do through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai, because the Lord has already warned us. All right. Now, there was an example in that movie. Of this plan out, and I just want to touch it, I won't go into any details because, again, I don't want to spoil it. This is a uh, second edges 15 and 15 for the sword and their destruction draws nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another. And swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions. Shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city. And shall not be able. For because of their pride. The city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. And spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. And this is describing a society collapsing. You know, their power is in their hands. They don't listen to their princes. That's sedition. All right. All of these things are going to play out. The Lord's words will never go back to him void. And this is a reality. Most people can't receive it because, again, the gift of faith wasn't imparted unto them. But it doesn't change the will of the Heavenly Father. The agenda of the Heavenly Father will stand and be performed. And this movie was an example of people sticking their head in the, in the sand and ignoring what's going on in the earth around them until it knocked on their doorstep. All right. So Lord willingness was edifying. You know, if you haven't seen it. I highly encourage you to go watch it. It's a very, very good movie. Very edifying. All right. Uh, very spiritual. All right. I watched it. I watched it twice. You know, and it was a very, very spiritual movie, man. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim. Who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquas who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity.